for cheap, fast, and reliable coins. Make sure to head on over to my sponsor, buymaddencoins.com. They got quick delivery, 24-7 support, and make sure to use code POOL at checkout for 20% off and an extra 10% coins at checkout. Hey, what is up, guys? It's Poodle back with another Madden Open Team video, and today I'm going to be doing my Madden 20 wish list. So I've been writing down things for quite a while for this now. I'm waiting for the right time to post it. I was going to do it before LA, but I didn't have time to record. I had a lot of, you know, traveling issues. So before I get into the video, make sure to comment down below if you agree with what I'm saying, and also comment down the ideas that you think that should be implemented, because obviously I'm not going to hit on nearly anything. I'm not going to hit on nearly everything, I should say. That's, there's probably hundreds of thousands of things that need to be changed. I'm just going to hit on the main ones that come to my, that I've written down, that come to my mind, that stand out to me. Now also, I'm going to put the like goal to 200 likes for this video. You guys have hit it well, many times before, so... If we hit 200 likes, again, I'm going to be doing this a lot because I have a lot of coins and I'm not specifically like building my team anymore. So comment down below 10K. If we hit 200 likes, I will be giving away 10K to two random people that comment 10K and like the video. So that's all you got to do. So that's about it. So let me get into this video. So, oh, and make sure to subscribe because we're trying to hit 2K by the end of March. So now get into the video. So first things first, what I want to see this year. So first thing that I believe, let's start from the beginning of Madden 20, let's say. What I'd like to see. So first, coming over to the binder. These cards, if you don't already know what I'm talking about, the rookie premieres, they're good. They're a good idea. I like them, but they need to be upgraded because it sucks that I have the best Saquon Barkley, but he only has a 96 speed when that's not usable anymore. So like at this point in the year, that Saquon Barkley isn't as usable as my Barry Sanders with 99 speed. So I they, they need to let rookie premieres have proper chems on them, right? They need to be properly kept and you should be able to change their team, which won't affect rookies. But it should just be there because like they should have full capabilities of a training card. So these are premier premieres need sprinter. That's a first. They need to have chems. They need to be able to. They have to be used like if they're able to be used like a regular card. They're an advantage. If you're spending 300, 400k for these cards at the end of our Madden, that you could easily sell off to people for real money. They should be usable. Like I love this card. I wish I could use it right now. It would be my starting running back if he was the proper Saquon Barkley. But he's not. It makes it less usable early in the year it's less right and early in the year i don't care like oh, that's a great card when i had 88 saquon that was a great card the first few weeks but it's not as usable come the end of the year when i want to have his upgrades the most so that's first with the rookie premiere second getting into this training so from a training standpoint awesome idea but it's kind of a coin grab if you really think about it so it saves you coins but it's like it's, it's crazy thing like this so look, let's say you want you hit that new Khalil Mack, right? I spent 600k on that new Khalil Mack. So I have the card, right? But wait, I want to train him up. And I want to have chems on him. Okay. So I have the card. But to get the card plus one everywhere, I got to buy a 500,000 coin limited time Khalil Mack, which I could power pass and all. But still, besides that, I got to buy his Halloween card. Let's just say his team of the week card, his full elite card, and all the training points to train up in between and his camps that is going to cost me well over a million coins so a million coins plus his card is 600k i'm 1.6 million coins for this left end that is crazy now does it sound like a good idea when we're doing it sounds awesome right now when does it work out the best it works out the best when you already had the card all year like i had this um let's say this vic i had the vic to a 90 overall then i had him to a 94 overall then i had him to the the ghost and then when you work it up, you don't feel it because you're using it as the year goes. But when, you wanna, when I started this Khalil Mack, I didn't have the chain even done. So when I started a chain fresh, it sucks. Like, it's like a, over a million coins for one card. That is ridiculous. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that that's how it's supposed to work. Like, they got to they gotta work around that too. Like, that's not cool in some aspects. Like, they got to bring the price down a little bit or make it work for more people because not everyone can afford to make new chains all year. I got, I was fortunate enough to do it off of all the coins I made throughout promos and sniping and methods, but not everyone's that fortunate. That's crazy. Second thing, the team captain tokens. They, they should probably give people more chances to get them throughout the year because I did everyone from day one and I just hit 99. Other people might never see that because you have to do them every single week, every single promo. And I understand it's fair because it, it does come through very slowly. But if you're, if you're on vacation for a week or two, or you miss a promo, or you come back, you're catching back up, I mean, it's not the worst thing, so it's not too much to talk about on that, but maybe give a few more out throughout the year. Let us get to that 99 a little quicker. Maybe the team captain should be the first 99 overall you get on your team. Maybe make a little more sense. Now, another thing, leveling up. It's kind of, it sucks. It, it really hurts newer players 
when you start later in the year and you can't level up too properly because a lot of players don't want to start playing at this point because everyone else is already level 80 and they have all the cool stuff now they have double xp solo battles but not everyone wants to play solo battles they should add double xp online double xp solo it should be double xp weekend for the whole game specifically or quadruple xp or give people ch better chances like they've probably done that before but more consistently because people are starting off at this point in the year people don't want to play the game like me like people don't want to play now with like the teams i have and stuff like people don't want to play the game now so a new player coming right now at level one it sucks it also sucks that you can't use the auction block and stuff until you're a certain level like it really makes it like you look at the game it's like oh, i don't want to do all this and start all over like it just sucks like i just think that should be a, should be changed a little bit now another thing that i think needs to be adjusted is the solo battles the solo battles are cool free rewards awesome but they're a little long 12 cpu games per week maybe more if you don't win 12 straight kind of like don't get me wrong solo battles are easy for me but not everyone finds them that easy not everyone has the team to compete in those for, for them at least some people need the team more because they're not too good at the game or vice versa they're very good at the game they don't need it but whatever a little long maybe cut that down to like eight games because 12 games one week two weeks doesn't bother me but after months it's like you can't play solo battles and weekend league and seasons and solo challenges and snipe and do you can't do the majority of what you want to do in this game you can't pick at all mad has become to a point where i have to pick one thing to do per week like i have to mentally prepare like weekend league okay i'm, I'm chilling on madden monday through uh thursday and when weekend league opens thursday night i'm playing weekend league that weekend i'm grinding that out even weekend league i can't play anymore so weekend league again 25 games it's kind of extreme it's pre it's pretty extreme to be honest i guess it really does separate people though like that last 15 games is a grind and it really does separate people from the best to the worst to the middle to the upper class you know what i'm saying but i don't know maybe maybe lower quarters down maybe less games just or better rewards if you just made it better rewards it would be more enticing but for me it's cool but it's not cool at the same time because i end up losing that money throughout the week anyways just buying one card like i don't know i mean obviously if you're if you're I, some people get millions of coins a week on this like if you're the best top 100 it's cool for you but not a lot of people even place within ultimate or elite so i place ultimate occasionally top 100 and for me the rewards are kind of worth it now imagine someone who can't even place gold like weekend league is just a blowout for them like it's just like they win like five to seven games five to ten games like that's nothing that's like 30 40k that i could have made playing solos kind of ridiculous in that aspect sometimes I really enjoyed Weekend League earlier in the year. Now it's gotten kind of ridiculous, so I think this is the point where they got to up it or something, because at this point, I really don't know. Second, the packs. The packs felt very, very off to me this year. Like, I don't know. I've been playing since Madden 13, and I have no limited time pulls in eight years now. That's probably just me. Did I say eight? I meant like six or seven. I don't know. I lose track sometimes. But that's probably just my luck. I have good luck, truthfully. I have good luck. Just I don't get the upper pulls. I get good pulls, not the upper pulls. This year's felt weird from a pack standpoint. I haven't really pulled anything too awesome. Not much to say on that. I mean, as a whole, I think the whole system of packs needs to be changed because, as you can see, people are people still will buy packs. Obviously, EA will still make money, but people are going towards the coin buying route. It doesn't make sense. I mean, unless you find packs fun, good for you. I'm not knocking you, but it doesn't make sense when packs are a hundred dollar bundle and the best possible pull you can get out of an ultimate legend pack is let's say 500k at the time okay cool you make 500k so a hundred dollars half of half of like a teenager's paycheck for the week maybe maybe the paycheck for the week a whole paycheck into a bundle where you quite possibly could get under 100k or at max 500k let's say most likely that's if you hate big when if you take that 100k and go buy a million coins I'd much rather take the guaranteed coins every time. Is it more fun to open up packs? Yes, it's way more fun. I, I'll give you that. Way more fun. But the thing is, sometimes you gotta weigh it. Like, is it worth, like, you could easily, it's like, if you open up a pack bundle for $100, it's easily like this. You just rip in the $100 bill, done. If you pull nothing. At least the coins are guaranteed. You know you're gonna get your, you're gonna get the adequate value for $100. So, to me, the coins make sense. Now, if EA wants to combat coins, if that's really what they're trying to do, packs aren't going to do it. They got to change those packs. Make the odds better. Make it so that it's almost even to buy, you know what I'm saying? Or even like the MLB route where they literally buy stubs at this point because you could actually buy the stubs. Like, not saying that I want to be able to buy Madden coins. I think that'd be stupid personally, but 
buy coins through EA at least. I'd rather buy coins from the the better sponsors and stuff like my sponsor than buy them through EA. Like, you know what I'm saying? But EA's gotta find a better way to do what they're doing. It's not the right way. It's become a very big money grab. Fire Fantasy packs are unobtainable unless you pull out your credit card for $35. Like, that's just unreal that no one can have Fire Fantasy packs unless you're an older kid or you're a teenager slash adult with a credit card that can buy them. And your parents say, no, when you're younger, it's over. Kind of ridiculous to me. Okay, another one. House Rules is cool. I'll give them that. House Rules is cool. I really enjoy House Rules. But every other week, they're ruining it. So, six games. Keep it at six games. Ten games. Kind of a lot. Six games isn't as intimidating as ten. Now, six in a row versus six all, all together, that's, uh, that's another debate because six all together means everyone can have a chance. Six in a row means a more of an exclusive amount of people have a chance. It's up for debate right now. Obviously, it's in a beta, so I'm not going to knock it too much. They, they just test, they test this out mid-year. I applaud them for doing that. It's a very cool game mode. Now, some switches. Maybe, I think this offseason when they're making this game, which they might have already finished it, I don't even know. They need to make a list of things that they want to implement and just pull them and just figure them out and go f go with those because testing out stupid stuff every week is not the move like i don't know i'm not a fan of these weird game modes personally not first and 23 attempts on a first down i don't know not a fan i think what would be cooler is like you change the game of football itself <clears throat> that's kind of whatever people are still going to play whatever but i think another way we could do it would be like you only have eight guys on the field like or oh they call it like flag football week you have three old linemen Three receivers, a running back, and a fullback, and a tight end. Like I'm saying, like cool game was that really make it feels like you're playing a different game. That might be cooler. Flag football week, or you know, backyard. We're playing backyard football this week, so we're only playing within the 50 yards. We're playing 50 yards, or or uh, sudden death. We all play within 20 yards. You have two downs. Sudden death. You know, like some some cool game was that really changed the game of football. Right now, it's just playing a regular game of football with stupid rules that are just really changing the way you play. I don't really like it. Now, some others were cool. I mean, like, I guess 50 yard rushing touchdowns were kind of cool, but then it was kind of annoying because, like, everyone's just trying to run the ball, and if they suck, they just leave the game. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll take the quit, but it doesn't lead for, it doesn't lead to an engaging game mode. It leads to a game mode. Their current things that they're doing, you know what it makes you do? It makes if the first person strikes, the other guy just quits. It makes for a game mode where it's very fast, easy to get done because everyone's just quitting. Because if you get one of these things, you get a lot of points. So like, they're like, I'm out, I'm out. They only know is they need one one big strike to make someone quit. So personally, I think like backyard football week. Well, like for Thanksgiving week, they have a house rules blitz. Every day of the week, you get turkeys and stuff, turkey likes, whatever collectibles going on. And it's literally like play back your football with the family. And like, or your players are wearing regular clothes or something cool like that. Like you're all wearing regular clothes. It's like playing back your football. It's in a it's in a stadium that's shaped like the the the, the head the what's it called the high school stadium. So I'm cool, like you know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion on house rules. One final thing for Ultimate Team before I get into some other aspects of game was that I kinda wanna talk about that I kinda like. First thing, when it comes to gameplay, I don't know how I feel about certain aspects of their, their you know how this year they implemented the, the, the motion where like, if you try turning direction, your player makes a whole motion shift to the right like that, like, it's cool, it's led to a lot of things, but it's not so realistic that in real life, everyone just goes like speed boost left, speed, like, if you watch this year, people stop and then speed boost back right, it doesn't happen in real life, it was more realistic prior like, you know what I'm saying? Like, years past, when, like, if you were, you pedal down, you go right, like, you can keep momentum. This year, if you don't do it perfectly, perfectly, you can mess up a whole play. Like, I've had times where I'm running down the sideline, and I try to inch in right a little bit so I don't run out of bounds, and my player does a whole momentum step to the right, and then that little step they do to the right gets me caught. Or I try juking someone out, and I take one step too early, and I fly out of bounds, like, I got used to it. I've gotten very good at it. I've gotten good at stopping and then going. And But all it leads, all all these things have led to is a cheesier gameplay. In years past, people just played. Like, people passed the ball. They sprinted down the field. They juked. They played football. Now it's like, stop. Go. Momentum right. Momentum left. Momentum left. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like I'm playing, I'm playing like a game of like, it's like watching The Flash. Like, it's crazy. Like, I've gotten very good at it. So I'm not complaining because I get beat by it. I win with it. But it's kind of dumb. It makes me, it's like not football to a standpoint. And then like to a point I'm saying, not standpoint. And then also aggressive catching. I don't have too much of an issue with it because everyone can do it. Aggressive catching is as simple as throwing it up and everyone can do it. Now, do I think high point catching in the back of the end zone was cool because a lot of people didn't even want to try it. Now, once I started doing it, I didn't really mind it. But again, not the coolest thing. I think maybe they should tone it down, which they try, but it's not working. 
But in real life, that does happen. There are high. I'm not complaining too much. In real life, I've seen you know, what's his name, Devonte Adams in person, like moss a whole team before. I've I've seen it happen, but not that consistently. That's a play that happens like once every so often. There's a, there's a game winning touchdown like that. You know, it's not it's not that consistently. And that's a catch not the easiest to make in real life with cornerbacks. Now another thing is animations. Like the animations are too inconsistent on gameplay. Too inconsistent. One time I'm there. And I, I press Y on the perfect timing, my guy doesn't move. Or it says bad timing when I don't even click it so the guy gets there. And vice versa, you get picks where you shouldn't even get them. Like, there's picks where, if you, I feel like sometimes if you're not looking, if you're like this, and the ball's above your head, you shouldn't be able to go like that. If your guy turns first, okay, fine. But I've seen picks where the guys are running upfield, not even looking, and they go like that. Like, like behind the back. I feel like that's very unrealistic. It's just a few little thoughts for me. And A, the button A is broken. In years past, you possession catch when you want to drop. So it should be like you catch it and you drop with it like that. In this game, it's like you catch it and you like shuffle to the left with it and then you get popped and then you drop the ball. Like in this year, it's made more sense to aggressive pack, aggressive catch a possession opportunity and then vice versa because this year when you're aggressive, you jump up and you get into like an untouchable animation. When you jump up, you get it and you bring it down and sometimes the guy will swing right past you. You can't hit them for some reason in the animation. It should have been like years past where you press A and you cuff it and you fall. Because in real life, that's what you do when you want to, when you when you're doing a hurry up offense, you want to catch it, fall, get back on the ball. You don't race, we don't waste time. Yak. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's about it for the gameplay. So just one final thing before I head out of here is connected franchise. Not many people you guys probably here care about connected franchise, but I do. I feel like it could be a very fun and rewarding game mode with friends. So one thing that I specifically want is to it should be more like 2K. 2K has hit franchise on, you know. Nail on the head of the hand, whatever the hell that thing is. Like, they, they've done it. I love the fact that when you're going to go make a trade, or you're doing free agency talk in 2K. So, I love when you're making a trade, and it's like, hey, what's up? I want LeBron James, you know. And it actually takes you to a cutscene where, like, you're on the phone with them. Like, you're texting the GM, like, what do you want? The GM's like, you know, he's untouchable, or you'd have to have the right offer. Or, like, we're looking for more of a first and a second. Like, Madden's like, you send the trade, it's like, eh, 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 you're getting closer, eh. And you're getting closer. There's no, like, it's literally just packaging what you can until you fill up an unrealistic bar. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to me. It's not as cool, in my opinion. Like, a first and a second. And then you could also send bums in Madden. <clears throat> like, actual bums. And they have value for some specific reason, which in real life, it wouldn't happen. Now, NBA is a little more realistic. Like, they call certain players, like, you want Stephen Curry? He's a franchise piece. He's not moving. Which is kind of cool because, truthfully, you probably shouldn't be able to trade for Stephen Curry. I don't think he is tradable for in real life or DeRay. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, vice versa, like, older veterans get a little discount. You know, like, he's leaving soon. He's on a one-year deal. You can take him. Now, I think free agency is really cool, too, where in free agency, it's like, hey, what's up? We want to meet with you. And the guy's like, I don't know. I'm looking for a little bit more money. Like, you communicate. It's very realistic. I like that. I think Madden should be more like that. And that's about it. I'm not going to answer this because it's become a very long video. But Madden needs more of a 2K standpoint. But on my career basis, it's kind of going to be harder to do. But if they could implement a lot more of 2K's aspects into their GM mode, the franchise mode, and then my career. We have an awesome game for next year. Now, will I do it this year? Probably not, but I'm hoping for it. So, if I missed on some stuff, if I missed on anything, comment down below what you guys think I missed on or what you guys think I, I shouldn't have said, like what was wrong, what I said. I'd love to hear your opinions. Also, make sure to hit the like, go 200 likes, comment down below 10K for a chance at 10K. And um, that's about it. I'm gonna try to get the QA up this week. Stay, look stay on the out. My bad. Stay on the lookout for that. I'm going to try to get that out. Got to get that up edited and finished recording because we had some issues with that too because of the flight and everything. So that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. See you guys later.